In the last video, we talked about the different classes of matter. We learned about heterogeneous mixtures, homogeneous mixtures, and then we learned about pure substances, which consist of elements and compounds. So the way you can separate something into either a mixture or a pure substance is by whether or not it can be physically separated. If it can be physically separated, we had a mixture. If it can't, then we have a pure substance. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a mixture, which includes the ink from this wet erase marker, which is a mixture, and I'm going to separate it. One of the means of separating mixtures is called chromatography. And chromatography essentially separates components of a mixture based on how attracted they are to one of two phases. In this, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes once it's complete, you have the paper phase, or the stationary phase, and you have the water, which is the fluent phase. And how attracted the molecules are to either of them is going to determine how much they spread out. So that's chromatography. It's separating it a mixture based on its affinity for one of two phases. Another way that we can separate a mixture is called distillation. And this would be a picture of a distillation setup and the apparatus. Um, basically what it has is a mixture that can be separated based on the boiling point. So if you have two substances with different boiling points, say for example you had ethanol and water. Ethanol will evaporate or boil at a lower temperature than water. So as you're heating it, all of the ethanol will boil off first, and then it passes through what's called the condenser tube. The condenser tube contains cold water flowing around it, and basically makes it cool down and go back from being a vapor into a liquid, which can then be collected in the receiving flask. So that would be chromatography and distillation. This separates things based on how attracted they are to phases. This separates mixtures of liquids based on their boiling point. And this is very useful for creating um, pure water, distilled water. Uh, A couple of other ways that we can separate um, mixtures by physical means would be by passing them through a filter, and we'll learn how to do a filtration tomorrow. Um, basically, you pass it through, and filtration will separate mixtures based on the sizes of the particles. So particles that are small enough will pass through, and particles that are too big get held behind. Another way, and this is used in recycling, that's how they remove a lot of the metal from the mass mixture that they get initially, is they have, you can take a magnet and you can separate anything that's magnetic from a mixture by pulling the magnetic piece out and leaving the non-magnetic part behind. Another possible um, means of separating things physically would be performing an extraction. So an extraction happens all the time. When you make your coffee, you have a coffee bean that's ground up. You have, you pass hot water through it and some of the material, caffeine and all the great flavors, gets get caught up in that layer, the water, and the rest of it gets left behind. So whatever's soluble in water will come out with the water, and that's the coffee that you drink, and everything that's not soluble in water will get left behind. So those are ways of separating things, separating um, a mixture physically. If you want to separate a pure substance like a compound, which contains more than one type of element, what has to happen is a chemical reaction in order to separate them. And one of those would be electrolysis, um, we'll get into that in more detail later. In this video, we showed what chromatography was on the screen, and we started to perform chromatography on a wet erase marker by just making a little pattern on here. What happened was water was drawn up the wick and then spread out across the filter paper. And what happened was some of the ink components of the black ink, like the blue, were more attracted to the water phase, or the, salt, the eluent phase, and it passed further across the paper. Yellow dyes had a stronger affinity for the solid phase or the paper and therefore were kind of left behind. So the more attracted it is to the solvent that's passing, it's the further it's going to move, the more attracted it is to the stationary phase, the more it's going to get left behind.